Yeah, I'd say yeah, another month or so should be ready to go outside. Welcome to the Super Pilotish channel. My name's Graham Wilson, and today I'm going to be talking about the benefits of gardening in my basement. Well, I mean, you can garden in your basement if you got grow lights and all that stuff. You want to spend a bunch of cash, but uh, I don't really do that. I'm cheap. I use the sun. So anyways, uh, last couple of days have been pretty busy with me. And uh, hey, Dan, I see you in the chat. Uh, it's been pretty busy for the last couple of days for me. I was uh, editing some video. Uh, I got that up. It, it was kind of a, a really uh, a butchered editing job, but I just wanted to get it out on YouTube and scratch it off my list of things to do. Uh, so <laughs> part of it is all goofy. But anyways, I uh, got that out of the way and it, we had some really nice weather. It's still nice today. And uh, so I was kind of digging in the garden. And uh, I was actually drilling some holes in my front lawn. <laughs> I was looking at, uh, now that I'm kind of semi-retired, I want to get like the ultimate lawn, right? I, there's these old guys on the, the other side of the street. I want to beat them, you know? <laughs> I don't know why, but it's like they got these super awesome, nice lawns and they pay someone to go spray chemicals. But it's like, I want to beat them on the cheap. Man. And then the old guys will go, hey, nice lawn. And I'll say, yeah, thanks. Nice lawn. You know, kind of a... Uh, I don't know, retired guy to retired guy uh, or semi-retired guy to retired guy. And uh, so that was kind of fun. And But you know what? It's like, wow, the, uh, the gardening stuff, uh, you know, whether you're raking or shoveling or <laughs> drilling holes in your front lawn, it's like, oh, I'm not used to using those muscles. You get a little stiffer as you get older. Uh, but, I mean, it's like some people think that, like, oh, I never used to hurt like that when I was younger. It's like, yes, you did. <laughs> you just kind of, yeah, you just kind of went on with your life or forgot about it. So, uh, except for sleeping. When you're a kid, you never wake up with a stiff neck. You, know, you, pass, you, you fall asleep on the couch, you're going to get a, a stiff neck when you're old. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get the whiteboard out here. We're going to be talking about the benefits of gardening. And I'm also going to kind of, I'm going to tie this into flying too a little bit because you'll find that, uh, you know, it's uh, in the world, man, everything's all connected. So what can benefit you for gardening can also benefit your flying. So there we go. <laughs> if you're creative enough, you can make anything relate to anything. Okay, so let's see. My number one, and this is all my opinion, <laughs> my exact scientific opinion. And uh, hey, Wrench, see you in there too. Okay, my number one motivation for getting a garden at first was because it was, it's free food, man. You just buy some seeds, keep them every year, and there you go. You one and done. Although you end up buying more stuff, you got to buy shovels and they, they, but once you get all your infrastructure set up, it can be pretty cheap if you, if you, uh, don't get sucked into every little neat little gadget that they sell you because there's a lot of cool gardening gadgets. So, uh, yeah, free food. And if you save your money on food, you got more money to pay for flying. <laughs> there you go. And uh, if you want to work on that license or rating or fly for fun, like I should be going up tomorrow. I think it's still going to be good. So I'm going to be... Uh, uh, working on my tailwheel landings tomorrow and luckily i got some free food and i can take my money i'd spend on food and uh, put that in the gas tank <laughs> okay so the biggest uh that was the biggest motivation for me and uh everyone will tell you uh of course you got your health benefits i mean there's just there's tons and tons and tons of uh, uh, benefits, uh, like whether it's you know uh, your mind or your you know strength, flexibility, uh, everything. But you know, one of the biggest things that I always notice is that, or actually, I just from googling around here and there over the years, is that you'll find that the people that live the longest in like, oh, here's some weird little village up in the mountains. And everyone lives to be 105, and it's like they all have gardens. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not eating Big Macs and McRibs and stuff. Uh, the McRib, greasy goodness. But uh, yeah, so they're not eating all that garbage, drinking Coca Cola. You know, they're they're drinking vino and uh, working out in the garden all day. 
climbing up and down mountains. So, uh, or you know, what, what would they do there? Uh, even in Japan and stuff like that, they all got their gardens, and or they do some sort of gardening. Uh, so, I mean, as far as I can think of, the the biggest thing is um, the health of getting. We'll just use tomatoes as a uh, as a uh, example. Tomatoes are a great thing to start off if you're gardening for the first time. It's you know just get her in the ground, grow it. Don't spend a lot of time. Go buy one that's like this high, transplant it, stick it in the ground. You're going to have good tomatoes right off the hop. Uh, cherry tomatoes work out great, too, because <laughs> they're, they're probably the easiest thing to grow that you can buy at the store. And But when they're growing in your backyard, uh, there's no chemicals there. You, you, know, you don't need to spray them for anything uh, unless, you know, the only thing like in, in the climate where I've uh, always been living, there's never really been any problem with uh, insects or anything like that. I guess if you're kind of maybe in, if you're in Miami or something like that, you know, you could get a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know, a little bit more mold, funguses, stuff like that with more heat and moisture and pests don't die off over the winter. They just kind of hang around. And uh, the iguanas, uh, the iguanas come by and eat your flowers. <laughs> That's what I've heard. But uh, cage them up. So, anyways, uh, the health there is definitely no chemicals. Keep that away. Um, and then when you're outside, you're getting some vitamin D. You're getting your tan. Working on your tan, looking good. And then, uh, so yeah, and strength and flexibility. It's like it's all, all one big workout there. So, and, uh, oh, yeah, Wrench brings up here, got to pick off the tobacco caterpillars from tomatoes. Yeah, uh, they're also called, uh, tobacco caterpillars can also be called uh, hornworms. It's big, gross-looking green with, uh, yeah. Uh, if you're wondering about those type of uh, things, the hornworms, they, um, uh, you'll notice uh like if you live in an area where they have great big huge moths like you know it's almost like a little bird flying around <laughs> uh those are what the hornworms turn into great big huge moths so if they, if you got a lot of big moths around they're going to be laying eggs in the soil and they're going to come out and those hornworms they'll just you can tell uh that you got the hornworms that we had them here one year because uh all right hornworm story time <laughs> what the heck uh, yeah, one year we had hornworms here because I was reading about, oh, the no-till gardening and uh, just let your soil be all nature, man, and everything. And I was thinking, hey, I don't have to dig up the garden. Sounds like a good thing for me, man. <laughs> I'm kind of lazy, right? So, hey, let's just let the soil be the soil, right? And, uh, yeah, we got hornworms that year. And we were just trying to figure out, you know, you look at the top of the tomatoes and it's like, Looks like something's eating them, or the birds eating them, or something. And then, if you look in, uh, if you're looking at the bottom of the tomato plant, maybe it's dry; it hasn't rained in a while, and it looks like there's mouse poop around there, like these little holes and stuff like that. But hornworm poop looks like mouse poop, so there you go. And that's that's the way that you can find them too. Is that if you look at a tomato plant, and it looks like there's a bunch of mouse poop there at the bottom. If you go straight up from the poop pile, <laughs> there you go. You're going to find your hornworm. And uh, another thing I actually bought, do I have it around here? I don't think I have any batteries in it, but I bought a, I bought a flashlight that, uh, that uses, uh, it's got some LEDs in there that uh, puts out UV light. And if you go out there at night and it's really dark, you shine the UV light on the hornworm and there's a yellow stripe on the back and that'll light up. So, and uh, yeah, so that's that. D -d 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 -d. <laughs> and wrench is getting his great uh engineering ideas right now cool uh yeah so okay a little tangent there for hornworms and uh yeah it's kind of funny and the hornworms when uh yeah if you see like a uh, a big cocoon uh lying around uh like there was a big cocoon hanging from uh the uh, my back porch and i thought oh that might be some rare uh, I don't know, some rare butterfly or something like that. Oh, I better protect it and not take down the cocoon. So if you see a great big cocoon, uh, that's probably going to turn into a moth and then that's going to be a uh, hornworm. <laughs> so uh, with th those moths, they kind of go back and forth. So I'm pretty sure I saw that big cocoon. I did the no-till garden 
it just went, oh, I'll go lay my eggs. <laughs> went down there in the garden, laid the eggs, and we got the hornworms. But we got them all. And uh, I don't know, the tomatoes still survived, but you got to really stay on top of them. And uh, there we go. Oop, we're going to switch back to blue here on my uh, marker. I got to get a new marker here. But it's my blue is hanging in there. Okay. Uh, one of the other things that I like... about gardening you don't really think of it but it is it's a survival skill so you are gonna in the process of becoming a, a gardener uh like just growing the food yourself that is a survival skill uh because like oh food's getting expensive right <laughs> and you got free stuff in the backyard uh but uh i guess that went back to the free food part of my one two three but anyways the survival skill there is uh once you know how like okay i got the confidence that i can okay i can take this little cup of dirt and i can stick these little weeny little seeds in there and a little bit of water and i know that's a, i'm 99 sure that's going to grow and once you do that after a few seasons you get pretty confident at it these tomatoes and we i keep my seeds from one year to the next and uh those ones there uh i've kind of kept those seeds for about Ooh, let me see here eight nine years ten years something like that uh they're really good tomatoes they're called persimmon tomatoes they look like a, the color of a persimmon when they're ripe uh but yeah so i know i can grow those if i had to move to you know the new world <laughs> you know when everyone came over to north, north, uh, everyone came to north america they brought seeds with them right so you know if i have to go to the new world wherever that may be I can bring my seeds with me and I got my survival skill to start up a new life if I need to. Uh, or even still as a pilot, bringing it back to the flying thing. Let's just say I'm, uh, I don't know, stuck up in the bush somewhere up in Northern Ontario or wherever in the, in the desert in the United States or something. Well, there's some of those things uh, you're going to learn, uh, like say, digging what type of soils you can dig in and what you can't so let's just say you want to do some kind of shelter or something you'll know oh, that rocky soil is no good but that sandy stuff is okay and then let's just say you gotta tie up uh, you're gonna be tying off your plants and you're gonna be doing other stuff and i was thinking too i was looking at my little rope that i had for my uh my uh memory experiment and it's like okay can i do i remember how to do a bowling knot i think so and uh, so I might need this to make a little loop in the garden somewhere. So I think the bowling nut was like that. Let's see. Ooh, jog the memory. And then you come up through the hole, around the tree, back down the hole. All right. Yeah, I think I got it. There you go. So in the process of being a gardener, you're going to learn different little knots and stuff. And that ain't going nowhere, man. So there we go. That's a, or starting a YouTube channel. That that's a survival skill too. But you'll or uh, here's an example too of you're looking at weeds and stuff like that in your garden, and you're like, "What's this stupid weed?" And you do a Google search on it, and you find out, "Oh, that's a plantain. Oh, that's edible." Or you say, "Oh, that's wood sorrel. That's edible too." Or these are uh, uh, purslane. Uh, purslane usually pops out that's edible too and so if you are stuck somewhere uh you can find the weeds that you're used to seeing in your garden and you know they're edible like i'll eat i'll eat the weeds out of my garden too uh throw it in a salad you're good apparently uh purslane is a good uh uh what's it got there uh i want to say like antioxidants or omega omega somethings or something like that and uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> lay off the nightshade although tomatoes are in the nightshade family okay so survival skill may hey, you might keep yourself alive for another couple of days in the bush okay now we're gonna get all meta here gardening it's good for the soul man it's uh you can you know it's not just you know you got your you got your mind, you got your body, and uh, there's also a kind of a little bit of, if you think about it, there's a bit of a spiritual aspect to it. It's uh, no matter what you believe in, uh, there's uh, 
it kind of makes you think when you're sticking a seed in the ground and these little guys pop up and then you get some more tomatoes, you keep those seeds for the next year and the same thing just keeps happening again. It's like magic, man. <laughs> it's like magnets. How do they work? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> it's like uh, uh, it kind of really, you know, it gets you thinking like, hmm, I'm kind of connected to something a little different here. And that's uh, there is a certain part of the human brain that requires uh, that need to be met. Some meet it through religion. Some people do it through meditation or whatever you want to call it. But um, you can, uh, and then, or, you know, you just feel like you're part of nature. Uh, so however you want to uh, think of it, uh, it's good for the soul. And what else is good for the soul? Giving your food away. You know, your neighbors say, oh, that's a great tomato. That looks great. Here, have it. Makes you feel good, right? <laughs> so any, anyways, uh, that's uh, another thing. It'll you know, brighten up your day, giving food away and stuff like that. And it's uh, good for the soul, man. Yeah. And then, uh, well, I guess part of it, too, is that um, you can even get into kind of like, depending on what you're doing, <clears throat> depending on what you're doing, you can get kind of into sort of like a meditative Zen out kind of space. And uh, I know my girlfriend, when she's picking berries off of our uh, our uh, red currant bush, she just, just kind of zens out and uh, picks berries, you know. And uh, so me, I, I can <clears throat> I can sort of get zen out, zen out when I'm like picking suckers off the tomatoes. And uh, one time, I don't know if it was, I was growing some weed plants back here. I don't do it anymore, but it was like, hey, it's legal. I'll plant it. And uh, there was like. I just remember sitting there and I was kind of trimming up these weed plants and you could smell the buds and everything was, you kind of get used to that flowery smell. And there's a little, uh, a little praying mantis was hanging out there with me. And I'm just like, Hey man, I, I don't think you can get high off of that, but I was all like zen out for like, Oh, okay. This would grow here. Snip this off. So it goes that way. Kind of like a, uh, like a bonsai kind of thing, but with a weed plant. And I had my little buddy, the brain mantis, there to hang out with me. And it was like, okay, that's looking pretty good. What time is it? It's like 40 minutes went by, like, doof, like whoa, it just zend right out. So that's kind of cool. And uh, when it's neat when that happens. And that also happens uh, when you're flying, too. It's like uh, when you're up flying, you're concentrating on, okay, what do I got to do here? How do I not die? <laughs> How do I keep that little spinny thing in the front going around? So you're you're like kind of thinking about things or right riding a motorcycle, you know, you're watching for traffic all the time. And so you kind of uh, your brain shifts into this one other mode of thinking. And all that stuff that was on the ground that was bothering you is not there anymore. Yeah, you know, like when you're flying. Like I always found that when I was the boss and uh, I go up flying and then like as Okay, I'm concentrating on the student while we're flying, looking for traffic. Did I hear the radio call correctly? Da, 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 all this stuff. And your brain's had, you know, really tuned in. And then as soon as the propeller stopped after that, I was thinking, Poof, I got to do this paperwork for Transport Canada. I got to remind, remind that guy. I got to make sure the medical's up to date on that dude. <laughs> you know? And then it's, but uh, when, as soon as the propeller started, my eyes zoned out. So that can happen in gardening too. It's a lot cheaper than flying. So anyways, uh, the other, we'll go for number five because YouTube likes the five, five reasons here, five benefits of gardening. Okay. And this, it increases your brain power. I, I really think it does. Um, I was looking uh, just a little bit before coming on here and uh, something popped up there that they said with uh, there's numerous articles about it where uh, dementia patients, they get uh, gardening and the symptoms of the dementia are, you know, not necessarily there or it mitigates any of the dementia getting worse. Uh, I would tend to believe that. Um because because of all those other things, you know, you're moving your body, you're uh, you're zoning out, getting all zen and stuff, and uh, yeah, maybe it's a social interaction at the nursing home wherever they might be. Uh, and so, anyways, the it, I think it increases your hey <laughs> for the soul art by Michelle Plunkett. Yeah, she knows all about the soul, 
And uh, hey, Michelle. And so anyways, the uh, the other part of the brain power there is, you know, you got to kind of think, you, you got to plan your garden out a little bit beforehand, okay? I can plant these little guys here. Dun, dun, dun. And uh, okay, I stick them in the ground. How big, how much room do I need for that? How, how big are they going to get? How tall are they going to get? Am I, are they going to get so high they're going to flop over? So you got to kind of plan that a little bit in advance for where you're planting these, because once they're established, you can't really transplant them anymore. You could, I mean, but uh, yeah. <laughs> anyways, it usually doesn't work out well once the plant's uh, pretty mature. So you got to do some planning there. There's your analytical mind working. And um, you also have to adapt to changes that might happen. So let's just say it's an exceptionally rainy year that year or it's a exceptionally dry year that year so do i need to water it what type of water should i use the water uh i like to collect the water off of my uh off my roof on my garage and off my house and i put that in there because there's no chemicals in it uh just <laughs> just detroit pollution <laughs> chemicals but those are okay <laughs> they're everywhere now pollu air pollution is not bad around here uh, not as bad as it used to be but um, yeah, so if you have, um, uh, or, you know, is it so hot? Do I want to just use the hose on here? And uh, that's cold coming out of the hose. It might shock the plant a little bit, but it's also got chlorine in there, which will evaporate overnight. You know, so like you're, you're still kind of thinking about this if you really care about doing it. And uh, so that's also just doing that type of planning and everything. I guess it's maybe kind of a chicken and egg thing because like you got to do that for flying too. You got to plan where you're going. You have to adapt to the changes that happen along the way once you're up in the air. Uh, so I don't know, maybe I'm that way with my garden because I'm that way in the airplane <laughs> or, you know, gardening is a, it is a reflection of your personality too. I mean, you can have uh, some people keep a meticulous garden. Some people add, ah, it's got a bunch of weeds and, in the end, there's no one correct way of doing the garden. It's kind of a, it's kind of like uh, an expression of yourself. So it's, uh, anyways. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yeah, everyone's joking. Everyone's joking around in the comments. So that is fine. That's what the Super Pilotish channel is for. So yeah, we'll do just a little bit of review here. What my personal uh, top five. Uh, uh, what do we call that? Pop, top five benefits of gardening. Number one, it's free food, man. That stuff's getting expensive these days. Great for your health, strength, flexibility, you name it, vitamin D. Uh, it's a survival skill. Hey, that can keep you from starving to death when you're uh, crashing your plane. Oops, don't want that to happen. Good for the soul, just like art is good for the soul by uh, Michelle Plunkett there. <laughs> you can check out her YouTube channel. She does a lot of shorts there. And uh, there you go. Like and subscribe to Michelle there. Um, and helps out your brain power. Uh, you got to plan a bit. You got to adapt a bit. And uh, you're going to be learning. And learning makes new little connections in your brain. And you can see different things. Uh uh, different things like say, oh, I noticed this with gardening and it also goes to flying. So anyways, um, thanks, uh, Michelle, for the compliment there. And uh, yeah, I'll just take a look here, see if we have any quick, uh, you know, questions and stuff like that. And yeah, we'll see. Questions, comments. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Okay, just a few. All right, Wrench no longer plants squash and pumpkin because the battle against squash bugs is too tra traumatic. Yeah, you know, you got to develop a healthy hatred of these bugs, and uh, they don't deserve to live anyways. They're just bugs. <laughs> so, yeah, the uh, it's... Uh, oh, another thing, when I was talking about those hornworms, the first time I ever squished a hornworm, I was like, oh, I'll squish it like a spider with my foot. Don't do that with hornworms, man. That guts, they, they shoot like 10 feet. <laughs> I just went, two of them shot off across the uh, cement. I was like, oh, my God, that's a pretty big thing to clean up. And uh, I, I've tried throwing them on the cement, just waiting for the birds to eat them. And the birds don't really eat hornworms. I didn't see any birds eating the hornworms. So, uh, yeah, if you're going to be squishing a hornworm, put like a, 
I don't know, paper towel over it or something, piece of newspaper, because those guts go flying, man. Okay, there we go. Uh, cool. So today is Friday. So it's the weekend coming up. Good weather here. It's going to get a little colder on Monday. But that's okay, because on Monday, I'll be here in the basement. Why? Because I do this Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Eastern. <laughs> and I'm going to shut this down here. Uh, yeah, so we'll just kind of shut her down. And everyone have a great weekend. And thank you for watching. <laughs> Bye.